first of all, let me wish you a happy new year. Well, I hope uh, 2021 is better than 2020. And I hope you have a great year. But uh, guys, it's just a one day difference between yesterday and today. It actually brings me to an interesting topic. Uh, I actually have it on the list way down. Uh, but it's sort of, it's a very similar thing between, uh, between sort of New Year and a blue belt, white belt, blue belt. So a lot of times I see posts from people uh, talking about, I just got my blue belt, I'm petrified to go to class. It's sort of like they're uh, carrying the weight of upholding the jiu-jitsu standards on their shoulders. And that's, I believe that's one of, the, one of the pretty big reasons why a lot of people quit at blue belt is sort of like, I can't tap the white belt. Guess what, you will tap the white belt. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's just, you know, you. When you get your blue belt, it's a recognition of the progress you made up to the blue belt, but you just might be a tiny bit better than you were yesterday and a tiny bit worse than you're gonna be tomorrow. That's the same thing with the new year. Uh, you know, it's just another day, uh, and uh, you should try to achieve consistency because I think, again, this is sort of uh, why a lot of people have these new year resolution. Okay, new year, new me. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good point to try to do something different. Okay, I'm it, slate is clean. That's great, but most important thing is to make a decision and commit to it and stick with it. So, uh, as you well know, um, no funny stuff today, guys. I'm a little miffed at my two partners here. Uh, can somebody guess why? <laughs> so, no funny stuff today. Uh, I have some questions that I have written down. Uh, we're going to start with that. And as you know, uh, the uh, people that ask questions live always get precedence. So uh, the priority is, is, you know, we start with something, give you guys enough ch uh, time to make sure you can ask your questions as they, as they come to you or as you, if you haven't prepared. But I have some questions, and if you guys are too tired, from celebrating last night. We have plenty of questions to cover the episode. But again, guys, start asking questions. The first one is gonna be, guys, this is a, a, a very, uh, uh, very um, fairly often asked question. And, and there's always an answer to any problem in jiu-jitsu. The question is, do you have the technical wherewithal, the, the timing, the strength, the uh, cleanliness of the execution and that a lot of that, some of that depends on, on your training partner or your opponent. So one of the questions that people ask, how would you react to Khabib's uh, tri leg triangle and, and getting pounded? Well, <laughs> you know, uh, Khabib is, is an elite grappler, an elite. You, you, it, it, so the question is, yes, there is an answer, but the question is, will you be able to execute that answer? Do you have the wherewithal? Have you drilled it enough? Have you, do you have the right timing, the right execution? So when he triangles the legs, obviously the first things, you have to protect yourself against getting pounded. So I'm more, most concerned about the hand in front of the face. Obviously you can posture up and use the other one, but this is my bigger concern. Now, second thing is, what, so I have to frame. One thing you gotta be very careful is don't prop yourself up because you can reach through the back and control your arm, which now, now you, if you thought you were screwed before, now nah, you're really screwed. So what you have to do is make sure that you um, kind of frame out first. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll up on my shoulder without putting my elbow up. I'm, what I wanna do is invert. Right now, Enrique can barely reach it. If I need to take it away, I can't, all right? Now, what I'm looking to do is pull one leg. If I, can, if I can pull the top one, it's better. If I can't pull the top one, it's bottom, and immediately go into guard. So. There's a couple of steps. First, uh, anytime you have a problem, you got to deal with the uh, with uh, with the problem in certain order to make sure you prioritize, guys. It's the same thing in life. Everything needs to have its priority. Okay, if you do things, you know, uh, you, you might be swamped with 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 a lot of things, and you know something should not get your attention that particular moment because if you do, you're gonna be late. You're gonna fail with the big stuff. So. Focus on prioritize everything in jiu-jitsu. That's a very important concept. So first, if or in MMA in this case, if 
you are in that position, first thing is you can't take too many blows to the head because that will certainly mess up your <laughs> mental state, your face, and a few other things. So as I'm bracing, right, I wanna, what I want to try to do is roll up, and I'm trying to get both, if I can, if I can't get both legs to squeeze a little harder, I can just one. Once I have one, I can start to move to the other. Obviously, you know, you're dealing with an extremely high level grappler, so this is not gonna be easy. It's sort of like when, when I teach, uh, you know, how do you escape from the mount, people say, Fox, this is hard. No kidding. It wouldn't be called a bad position if it wasn't hard. If it was easy, it would be a, an okay position, okay? So again, um, when you trap, when your legs are trapped, try to roll up on your shoulder. Well, first protect yourself. Try to roll up on your shoulder and try to extract. You could start to feel like right now it's my bottom leg, but once my, my bottom leg now is partially out, not enough. However, now I can take out the top leg and that's even gonna be easier. Now the question is, you know, what's the follow-up reaction? Again, guys, you need to make sure that you uh, have a follow-up attack. Don't just, uh, anytime you either attack or defend, don't just kind of um, attack the immediate task and then say, oh, great, I've done it. No, you now need to progress. Now, if, if, if you successfully defend, you have to sort of, so you defend neutral to attack, okay? Uh, for my game, my game is fairly aggressive. And if I have, if once I take it away from the other guy, I take the momentum, I attack almost, almost immediately. So I'm going from defend, I almost bypass neutral. Because a lot of times people make a very big mistake in, in training or in, in competition where they basically don't bypass neutral. They take it away from the other guy and then they pause in neutral and think like, okay, I've done a good job. Well, that neutral can be taken away from you very, very quickly. But once you take the momentum from your opponent, it's, it's, a, it's a big thing. Mike, do we have any questions? We have a question from Dowhead. He's asking, how do you get that armpit grip in split guard? I tried to guide it in with the shot with the shotgun grip and then move my hand out for armpit only, but they always slip out. You have to drill this. Uh, you need to make sure, first of all, it's your leg and torso positioning make it that his arm is extended in a certain way. So, you, you know, if the guy has plenty of movement, he, it, it's easy. So if, uh, if I just grip it without any legs, well, go ahead, pull. Yeah, it's, it's not super easy, but it is easy enough to pull here, okay? So now I'm clamping down, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my legs in a position that now he cannot turn his elbow. So if he can't turn his elbow, he can't turn his shoulder that well, now it's much, much harder to, to, uh, to pull out that, that arm. So you have to understand that anytime, it's sort of like a knee bar. If, I, I, you know, uh, it's, it's basically an analogous grip uh, under the armpit. When you grip, uh, knee bar somebody, it's very easy for them to escape if they can turn their, their, their hips and their leg, if their kneecap can turn in, in a different direction. It's the same thing, so now I, it's not just I, I grip, it's a pretty strong grip, but as, if, if the guy can turn his elbow, turn his shoulder, now he can get an angle where he can escape. So you have to make, put his arm at an angle that now it, he, he, he cannot, he can no longer do this, all right? So anytime I get that grip, so I get the grip first. So this is not easy, it's, it's, he can pull it out, to turn your elbow. Yeah, so you can see how much easier that pull out gets. So I'm not a fan of pulling shotgun grip. You can, but most important is to control the uh, uh, angle of the elbow with your legs and your torso. So between my legs, my left, uh, left leg is pushing his body in that direction, but my torso is, is, so do you see how that shearing action, my left leg moving to the right and my torso moving to my left. So that puts a lot of pressure on, on, on your opponent and that's what prevents them from pulling out. Because now the only option is to pull out straight. But as say pulling out straight, they were actually making um, that arm tighter, the, the elbow tighter, and it causes additional pain. In regards to the same position, Mr. Linguini, <laughs> he's asking, 
Hi, Fox. A few times playing split guard, I have the armpit grip with my left arm, left foot on the hip, and my right foot is stuck as a butterfly hook. How do I free the foot and transition to split guard? Uh, push. Yeah, uh, guys, if you look at, there's some instructionals, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, guys, a lot, there's a lot of stuff that's for free on YouTube. You, and if, if, if the DVD, the instructional is not free, a lot of times there's preview. So a lot of guys do the, the butterfly hook uh, and, you know, attack either with Tommy or split guard. The problem is that for them to work the best, the guy cannot move forward because if somebody's stuck, and they can move slightly forward. Now they can start to turn that elbow and the, and the shoulder. So again, I'm I'm a big fan, especially um, whether it's Uregatame or you know or or the um, the split guard attack. You put both feet on the hips. So, so this is what you have. If that's the case, the problem is see how Enrique is moving forward. So he removes by doing that, and my left leg. Um, Position is, is marginal, so turn around. So it's marginal, it keeps slipping. So as he moves forward, he removes the, the pain. So the pain motivates people to move in a certain way. Um, once, if I, if I can cause him steady pain, he has to move in response to that pain. So once he, I have a butterfly hook and this one. So if this one was strong, I can push. And now I can make, I can put it on his, put my right leg on the hip and start to make adjustments. Um, if this, if my left leg is marginal, now that, that this is a problem because now he can move forward and start controlling my hips and basically take any threat on that arm away. If that happens, I'm going into guard recovery mode because even though he's still in your guard, your, your hips have been compromised. So because he just moves so close to, uh, forward. So as I tell you, when I attack the guard, guys, I don't want him too close or too far away. I want him in that in between. And the split guard is, is a perfect example of that in between. Um, so if I ever uh, see, again, you have to make a quick judgment call. This, my left leg is, is not marginal. I can push, and now, now he's, he's in trouble. If my left leg is, is marginal where it's slipping, so this is really, what I would probably do is, is I would try to, push him off to the side, that's not gonna happen. At that point, I, would, I might try to uh, threaten a choke, but right now, I know what he's gonna do. Once he beats this, he's passing my guard. So at this point, I'm going into guard recovery mode. So again, effective split guard depends on your ability. Yes, you can do that with butterfly hooks. I don't have a strong lift in my legs, especially once your legs get kind of uh, pushed, uh, your heels get pushed against your your uh, upper hamstrings. There's not a lot of lift. Some guys still have, can create a little bit of an angle to start to lift. But the reality, if you're going against a high level guy, um, it's been somewhat compromised. So you want to have at least one foot on the hips and use it to stretch them out. Once you can do that, you can put both second, uh, second foot on the hips. If you can't stretch them out, if, if basically the foot that's on the hip is marginal where it's really not on the hip, it's sliding off. You need to go into guard recovery mode and then try to make the adjustment to get at least one foot on the hip to try to stretch him out. And Dial Head is also asking, can you show how you get that big distance with your legs and split guard from closed guard? I think that's what I'm doing wrong. Uh, go to the Bernardo Faria video that we did. So if you put Bernardo Faria and uh, and the Fox or Carl Prave, K A R E L P R A V E C. Uh, yeah, you better learn how to spell my name. Uh, I we go over that. Yeah, we go over that. Uh, it's not not a great level of detail, but some some level of detail. But basically, what it is is so when it, somebody's in my closed guard. So I'm gonna, if I'm out here, I can always put my foot on the hips. But if, you know, he closes the distance, I, I cannot put my foot on the hips. So if you try to open your guard and plant your foot and frame out and now, start, yeah, this is basically, it's a race. But, you know, for me, I'm trying to race to put my foot on the hip and then also get the grip on his arm. He's obviously going to put his, put his uh, knee in the middle and now I have a hard time 
chasing them down or, or, or getting something done. So when that happens, when I'm close, what I do is I push my hips up, open my legs, but I'm squeezing my, my knees together. So he doesn't, there's a delay. He doesn't feel that my guard is open. It is open right now, you, can, you guys can clearly see, but he can still feel tension around his waist. Now I'm gonna frame, and I have one foot on the hip. Once I get one, I will generally be able to get the other. Again, guys, when you, one, one very important point, when you put your foot on somebody's hip, don't do this. This is gonna slip. Curve your foot, make, make, that, make that grip count. So two, is two, uh, two feet on the hips is better than one. Um, but if you have one that's solid, you can stretch him out enough to get the other one on. And if he, if he starts to reach, so for example, if I had my left hand, we're going back to this, if I had my left foot on and I'm stretching him out to put my right foot on, first of all, I can control, uh, control his, his, uh, um, his wrist, but if, even if I lose and he tries to shove it down, that basically leaves him so vulnerable to go down because he, he's no longer posting, posting on that arm. His arm is too busy trying to control my ankle. And Matt's Can I answer that question about the, the opening of the guard? I, I would go to that video. It's on YouTube. It's Bernardo Faria channel. Uh, just put in uh, uh, Carl Pravic, Bernardo Faria, or Bernardo Faria, Carl Pravic. Uh, I think it's, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's covered. Because I, I think, you know, Bernardo actually asked, like, oh, you didn't open your guard. Uh, because there's a delay, you don't feel it right away. Advanced staff is asking, any tips for guard retention, starting from bottom, close guard versus a bigger or stronger opponent? Um, I'm not a fan of just holding a bigger, stronger opponent. You have to attack. Uh, if you have a close guard and a bigger guy, they will break through your guard. You know, you may fail many times, but if you try to hone that skill, eventually you will prevail. Uh, you know, in my view, offense is the best, best defense. You know, if you just kind of hold, hold steady and, and still hoping that he may, you know, yeah, there is a school of thought where you close your guard and just hope for dear life and, uh, you know, that the guy as he start, tries to do something, uh, that he actually makes a mistake and you can capitalize on it. The problem with that is, is that, uh, you know, in, in self-defense or MMA, and don't forget, jiu-jitsu sh should be with a primary focus on, on, on self-defense. If he stands up and starts hitting your face, your jiu-jitsu failed. So you need to have a jiu-jitsu that withstands the test of possible strikes. And I think, you know, if you train with that mindset, you should not sort of have, uh, give your opponent the opportunity you know, if there's seven unanswered blows to the head, that's a problem. One of those is gonna count big. So, you know, if you take one glancing blow, okay, that's, that's not a problem, but you have to learn to move. You cannot just close your guard and hope for the best. And we have a question from Dino Pal. He's asking. Any <laughs> That's the beauty of YouTube versus, you know, it's funny when we're live on Facebook, just so you guys know, the reason we're live on YouTube, it's because the, the picture quality is better. Uh, but <laughs> on Facebook, you kind of know who you deal with. Uh, but the benefit of YouTube, you guys get come up with all these crazy creative names. He's asking, any tips for getting the underhook from bottom of half guard? Greetings from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yes. You got it. Uh, get the underhook. And bottom half guard. Bottom half guard. Okay. So, again, I'm framing out. So, if Enrique, it, 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 it should not be difficult. So, the question is th there's a lot to it. Is You know, there's guys that have very good half guard. Um, you know, and, and very aggressive, Tom DeBlas being one of them. Uh, there's a few others. Um, so I'd encourage you to, to look at the, the, the videos that they've made. But basically, even if he's tight, I can either, I, I wanna move him back. If I can't move him back, 
So what I'm going to do is move him forward. Once he moves forward. So guys, don't don't look at it guard or half guard or any part of jiu-jitsu as two-dimensional. That's, that's one of the problems that people have is they look at it as, okay, uh, you know, either left to right or backwards or forwards. So you need to make sure that you make all the connection. It should be three-dimensional. It should be left, right, forward, backwards, and up. You can't go down because the mat is in the way. But, <laughs> but uh, you have to do, uh, you have to think three-dimensional. So if, if the guy, if you're trying to push frame out against him and he's driving forward, hit him forward a little bit, and that's when that underhook comes in. You need a small opening. So, it, it, you know, I, I do that a lot in, in, in close guard with, uh, with the Udigatami grip, with the upside down grip. There is no gap. So right now, I can't move left or right. I can't move forward or backwards, but I can move up. And now I have, I have the grip. If Enrique, my left uh, grip is marginal, Enrique starts to counter, I switch. So again, I, you, you, one of the reasons when you go nuts with your training partners, it's one of the things that you should really focus on is have good training partners that you can get some feedback from and also sort of experiment with some things you learn, whether it's from your instructor or from the videos, is try to see what the possible reaction, but because you're not under duress, like you're not going balls to the wall, you could actually think about, okay, I can see this is a weakness, what happened here? So I know just from experience that my left foot was marginal, so I immediately, I don't even try to just force it, I basically just go to perpendicular guard. Um, before we go, I, I just want to real quick, uh, uh, Anand Sharma sent me a video last night from India, and, and I want to really quickly address the omoplata, and then we move on to the other questions. So there is, question is, omoplata, we did a video with, with uh, Firas, and uh, there's a couple of different ways that people counter, counter omoplata. So understand that the reason why Enrique is able to do the counter that he's, uh, that he's gonna do is I, I, I made a mistake or I was too slow. First of all, my hips are turned away, uh, and he's already countering before I even had a chance to sit up. So it means that you kind of fail. So if, if I see the guy going, north south and goes to the other side now i'm i'm done so as i see him go, going through that counter so if i feel them doing this i'm gonna actually go with their movement so guys if you can't stop somebody's movement the other big major way to to counter them is to not rot, don't you can't stop them anymore over exaggerate over accelerate their movement so when i land here I usually take a big back step, and from here I, I will I will attempt to do a, a reverse triangle. Um, but at that point, I'm dominant. So again, as he steps over, it's you were too slow to, you could not, you know, you might have made a mistake, or the other guy was just a little faster, basically because you you have two problems: the way your hips are already being crushed, that's one, and the second one is is that now he's going, you can't even sit up, so you can't try to sort of counter him to, to slow him down or to actually uh, to force the move. Uh, effectively, that's what it is. Like say, if, 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 I could, if I could sit up, go ahead, start to, yeah, if I could sit up, I'm, I'm basically gonna try to force the move. Because I'm, you know, I was able to sit up, but in this case, I couldn't sit up. So if I see this, that's it. I'm just gonna go with that. And now, now it's basically, I don't really care. I would stay on top and try to finish, um, but it doesn't matter if he, if he rolls me down, we're gonna land in such a way that he's done, this is done. It's a reverse triangle. Now the other one is, is uh, so when the guy ducks under, so when you go, this is a very, very good defense. I actually, if I can hook under the far leg, I will. If I can underhook far side, but if, what they do, so they duck under and then drive. When that happens, guys, you, I'm going to guard recovery mode, um, you, uh, but I'm gonna try to see if I, so I keep my leg heavy, I fight, and then I switch. Once I'm here, guys, I will try and go. Um, sometimes what happens is, is, yeah, he's controlling just too well. Again, I'm seeing, I'm creating a scramble. You know, once, guys, once you fail, you gotta try to create a scramble. 
If you if if you're being hunted, scramble is your friend. If you're doing the hunting, scramble is not your friend. So hopefully that helps. So again, you have a couple options depending how well he reacts. If you can throw that leg over for a triangle, but notice what happens when when um, so as I'm fighting for the triangle, look what happens to his head. So rather than driving, so if I can bring it over, great. This is actually what I like to do. Now I'm gonna make a judgment call. If he's gonna be very conservative, I'm gonna lock up a reverse. If he comes all the way through, I'm gonna lock up a straight triangle. But if I can bring it over, so what I'm gonna to try to do is make, it, make my hips, my legs heavy. So what, how do I do that? You bring as much of your upper body off the mat so your lower body carries it. If I can hook under, this is great. That's not always gonna happen. No, 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 don't tap me. Happy New Year. But that's not always possible. So when I cannot, so my number one answer is bring the leg over the head, if I can, because then I threaten a triangle. He will, at the very least, he'll back off. Uh, if uh, number two is just guard recovery or trying to over-exaggerate his movement and create a scramble. What other questions we have, Mike? Nicholas Kowalski is saying, Happy New Year. I have a hard time with playing half guard and people pass with their hips close to the ground. Uh, again, I don't, I'm not a fan of half guard. Um, I will go there if I have to, but generally speaking, I will, uh, I will try to switch to a full guard. Guys, this is a pretty, uh, pretty big topic I wanna, I wanna say to you. So, First of all, figure out what you want to work on, okay? Figure out what the, what the uh, kind of, what are your, for the high level guys, it's gonna be sort of ancillary things to their main game, to try to build up and, and, and every so. For, for the newer guys, it's gonna be a lot of, lot of new things, you know, like what should I work on? So if you're brand new, your number one priority is be comfortable being uncomfortable. You know, then you work your defense and eventually you're gonna to start to move into offense. Um, but I, I want to recommend to you guys, once you decide what you want to work on, there's a lot of free resources. Just, you know, put in, uh, you know, search box on YouTube and, you know, the topic, and then a couple of guys are going to come up. People have, there's some very good teachers out there, but they have very, very different styles. There's some guys that people can stand. There's some styles that people uh, are leaning towards. Get, what do you think you're going to learn the best? Whether you're, it's 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 in class or, or 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 video remote, it's going to be somebody that resonates with you. Like you, you like that style. You you can oh man I yeah that's that makes sense. So again you know half guard is not one of my I have a lot of high level stuff. I my closed open guard is is very very strong. Um, a triangle reverse inter inverted uh, straight um, uh, arm bars you know guillotines head control. Uh, knee bars, but half guard, I, when I am in the half guard on the bottom, I try to go back to split guard or full guard. So for me, it's a trans transitory position. So again, it's, if there's something is that you're interested in, put in half guard, go on YouTube, and then buy that guy's uh, DVD because that's what's gonna help you the most. Uh, I don't like because, I don't like being, when I'm on the bottom because especially my hips are crushed. Um, I don't have a lot of, you know, oomph once I get here to, to get a sweep. I don't, I got a scrawny neck. So if, if Enrique wraps my head either in front or, in, yeah, there's a lot of possible threats for me. So what I'll try to do is when I get in a half guard is go full guard and immediately attack. So that's my sort of response to half guard. I don't linger in half guard and just like, okay, what are you going to do? For me, it's it's in, in MMA, you're vulnerable to possible hits. Um, it's it's a great guard if you if you uh, if you sweep, uh, and there's some some guys that are very very proficient with it, and that's the guys I'd encourage you to to specifically look to 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 provide answers to your questions on the half guard. For me, again, the bit overwhelming thing is to put put in full guard attack from there. Ryan D'Souza is asking. 
What positions in sport jiu-jitsu would not be applicable for self-defense in your opinion? What positions in sport jiu-jitsu would not be applicable? Anytime you're underneath somebody where you could take repeated blows to the head. Uh, I think just w one of the very obvious ones is just closing the guard. Uh, you know, I, I think there's just some, a, a bit of a mis, mis, uh, mis I don't know what, what the right word is, mis, misunderstanding about what sport jiu-jitsu versus real or combat or, or <laughs> self-defense based jiu-jitsu. Um, you could take any high-level guy that's basically elite guy, you know the big names, that in a competition they pull you know, they pull double pull, double guard pull and they try to bear them all over 50-50 guard each other. And people say, well, look at this. These guys would never, you know, how would that work in a fight? It wouldn't. But do you think that guy doesn't know how to double leg somebody and beat the shit out of them? They do. The reason why they're playing that game is because their opponent, could be semis, could be finals, is almost equally matched. So you talking tiny little things, there's big strategy, okay, if it, with 50-50, it was basically, you know, it would be a lot of times score 6-4. And the guy that initiated or took it, like there was specific times when to try to reverse. So at the end of the day, when the match is over, that you're up on points. But people make a big, uh, uh, like, oh, sports jiu-jitsu is shit. And then this is the, now, uh, guys, I guarantee you, you, let me use an example. Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall is a phenom. He, I, I, I love him. I think he's one of the greatest innovators. Uh, is, is amazing jiu-jitsu. Um, I really like his game. He was, in a, you know, but he's known for, you know, back in the day, he was known for triangles, but also he was doing heel hooks 10, 12 years ago, 15 years ago. You know, he would pull guard and, and, and guess what? Look at his record at MMA. Guys don't want to fight him in MMA. But also, when he was in the altercation, there's an old video of him. Some he, he double legged the guy, but he would have been before labeled as a sports jiu-jitsu guy. No, he's he's well rounded. Any high level sports jiu-jitsu guy is well rounded. That if he if he goes into an altercation, he's not gonna sort of pull guard and bear a bowl underneath the guy. He's gonna double leg the guy and beat the shit out of him. If something goes awry, like, you know, it starts and, the, you know, the guy just pushes him, he trips over a chair, he's underneath, yeah, then he may use the bare ball to get to get to the guy's back and choke choke him out. So I, I think, again, uh, you know, uh, if you're primarily training for self-defense, it's very, very important for you guys to start to think about, okay, can he hit me? And how many times? So if I close my guard... Can Rika hit me? Yes, it's quite a few times. Can he hit me now? No. So I'm okay to close my guard, but I don't. So can Rika hit me? No. I mean, those, you know, yeah, okay, it's butterfly punches. So the point is, but if, a, a, again, I will invert, I will play open guard, but again, I will pay attention. So if, if I feel that the guy, that's what, um, it's one of my big pillars in, in playing guard, playing the bottom is, um, I have a very aggressive guard, and my philosophy is, I can't, you can't just close the guard and basically just wait for the guy to, uh, to, uh, to start hitting you in the face. Because that, your guard will open very quickly. He doesn't have to open, it will open very quickly. That said, there's guys that have that philosophy. I'm gonna keep my guard closed until the guy you know, uh, until he gives me an opportunity to to attack, he makes a mistake. But a lot of the times, those guys when they fight MMA, they they're proficient. It's you know, if you have a good black belt, lead black belt, they can do a lot of things. What you see on the mats in a competition, a jiu-jitsu competition, is not how they would fight in an MMA or in, a, in an altercation. So, long story short, um, it's it's important to sort of just think any any time he's stuck in a position. Oh man, can he hit me? How many times? I better figure a way out quickly. So, and we have any other questions? We have Adolfo Fronda asking, Fox, guys are rolling towards me when doing the near side armbar with the armpit grip when I'm 
top of cross side and I'm losing it even when I put my foot on their hip. From the bottom or from the top of cross side. So this is what's happening. Okay. So if once I sit, I will bring the, the leg over and I will try to control their head. So if they do roll forward towards me, they're going to come straight into a triangle. All right. So I'm not sure how, you know, how they're reacting, but I'm guessing that you can't sit down, so if you feel, one of the reasons I like these windshield wiper movements for arm bars, and I do this, but you know, if, even if his arm is on the other side. So as I'm sitting down and I start to feel Enrique, come, I just come back. It's a very small movement, very slight movement on my part to put my weight back on him. So once I start to isolate, if I feel, I just come back. I just come back. Now, if once I commit to it and I sit, I need to make sure that I control the hand. So as he's coming forward, and I go into a triangle. So you have to always, guys, anytime, especially doing something which you can potentially give up the top position. Uh, this is another big point. So anytime you're doing something that you could potentially give up the top position, you have to make sure that you understand what are the follow-ups if that should fail. So I suspect that you're kind of leaving the leg. In this case, I, I, that's kind of, so as you're going for it, you're kind of leaving it here. You're sitting before you're setting it up. So what you need to do is, as you winch your wiper, see how I'm sitting away? It's the same thing I do for the for the guillotine, you know, when when I do the um, uh, guillotine guard pass. So you can't just sit and bring him on top of that. Yeah, this is gonna fail. Actually, this this is quite bad for me. So when I decide to go for it, I'm moving my hips away. So yeah, go ahead, take the wrap. Yeah, I know you want to. <laughs> it's very easy for me to come back. All right, but my my hips are far enough away for me to have a lot of mobility in my left leg. There's a lot of things I can do. So again, when I'm attacking from the top, whether it's it's the same side arm bar or the guillotine, I do the same thing, it's my hips move away. So if I'm, on, see how my hips move away? So I'm not, I don't just sit. If I just sit, this is gonna fail. So I'm moving my hips away, so that way as he's chasing down my hips, He's, he's gonna get choked. So with the arm bar too, when you sit back, make sure as you're sitting, control the arm and move your hips away so you can actually put him, so even if I fail, so even if, let's say I can't control his, his left arm. So, so I fail and I bring him back in. So basically, what I did is I, bas uh, I basically, if my uh, right leg cannot clear his arm, and again, understand that you probably may, in order for this to happen, that's a couple of mistakes that I made. But basically, I have belt suspenders, and I don't know what else would you hold your belt with, maybe your hands. I have like a backup plan to a backup plan. So again, first plan is to finish the arm bar as it is, okay? Second plan is control the arm, put him in triangle. And third plan, so as I go back, put my foot on the hip, put him in, into split guard, and now finish however, whatever he kind of gives you from split guard, all right? And apparently we're out of time, guys. So guys, happy new year. Train jiu-jitsu. I hope everything is better in 2021.
All right. See you next time, guys. First Friday of every month, 9, uh, 1030 a.m. Eastern Time. Like, share, and subscribe. Oh, yes. Guys, like, share, subscribe. Because if you subscribe, then you can you can ask questions live. If you not you can watch this afterwards, but then you know you can ask questions afterwards. I, I usually try to keep track of them, but I have so many that it's hard to answer them them all. All right. See you next time.